This is the time of year when some Christians are asked, what are you giving up for Lent? I wouldn't mind betting that the most common answer to this question is chocolate. Why? Because chocolate is something we can give up, because it's not a basic necessity. But at the same time, giving it up seems a very virtuous and worthy sacrifice, because chocolate is so nice. I was surprised to find out recently that the British are the biggest chocolate eaters in the world. On average, each of us consumes about 11 kilos of chocolate per year. Now, chocolate, of course, comes from the beans of the cacao tree. And apparently, a cacao tree produces about one kilo of chocolate per year. So if you're an average chocolate eater, and I think I'm probably a bit above average, you consume the product of 11 trees every year. We tend to think that the best chocolate comes from Switzerland or Belgium, but in fact, chocolate as we know it today is a British invention. It was Joseph Fry in 1847 who designed the first bar of chocolate. Until then, it was only consumed in liquid form as cocoa. But where does the more raw material come from? It was the indigenous people of Southern America who first discovered its benefits, that's why we still get labels like Maya Gold. But now it mostly comes from West Africa. In fact, 40% of the entire world's supply of cocoa beans comes from one small country, the Ivory Coast. But before you start to think how nice it must be to live in a place where you're surrounded by chocolate, I have to tell you that most cocoa farmers have never tasted chocolate. The raw cocoa is bought up by international companies processed and packed in other countries and by the time any of it if any gets back to where it started from it's an expensive luxury that certainly cocoa farmers could never afford. The majority of cocoa farmers live in poverty. They're mostly older people because cocoa farming is so unprofitable that most young people are not interested in taking it up. If the farmers are old many of those who do the hard work are children. Children as young as five are handling dangerous sharp tools and uh, carrying heavy loads and being exposed to fertilizers and pesticides that threaten their health. And of course having to work like that means they never have a chance of getting any better sort of future by going to school. Employing children for low pay or even for no pay at all is often the only way a business can be viable. Even then some of the farmers themselves live in extreme poverty. But much the same applies to other products like tea, coffee and bananas. Workers living in poverty, doing dangerous work in unhealthy conditions, while we benefit from cheap prices and people in the middle make big profits. What kind of world is this, where our favourite everyday pleasures come to us at such a terrible cost to other human beings? The problem is that farmers have to plan a year ahead and invest money to produce their crop. But because of unpredictable weather and unpredictable market conditions, by the time they harvest it and try to sell it, they often find that the costs have gone up and the price has gone down. Something, sometimes all their hard work has just made them poorer. This is where fair trade comes in. The Fair Trade Foundation and other similar organisations work with farmers to guarantee a minimum price so that they can make a reasonable living while being fair to their employers and kind to the environment. The end product may cost a little more, but when you think of the alternatives, it's surely a small price to pay to make a difference, such a big difference in the lives of other people. We are now in fair trade fortnight. A good opportunity to get into the habit of looking more closely at the labels when we're doing our shopping. Of course, there are people here in this country who struggle with poverty and have to buy the cheapest brand wherever it comes from. 
How about those of us who are a bit better off picking up an extra gift for someone else or dropping a fair trade product into the food bank? Just a thought. Thank you.